Lisa, thanks for being with us. So $1.76 billion, up 53% year to year, and now we're talking about Ryzen Mobile. This chip is doing really well for you guys. And I'm wondering, how did the desktop success, the launch of that, set up for the notebook chip? Is it, should we expect the same trajectory or is there a little extra juice behind it now? Yeah, so John, first of all, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me uh, this morning. And um, I would say it's been a good start to 2018. So um, our focus has all been about new products and how we bring new products to market. And the Verizon product line has actually done uh, really, really well. So we started with desktops and did really well with the desktop um, products. And now with Verizon notebooks, we had you know, over 25 new notebooks launch um, here in the second quarter. And it's right ahead of the big season for notebooks in uh, back to school and holidays. So yeah, I'm very optimistic about what we can do um, in the notebook business. And you know, overall, PCs are actually a little bit stronger than people expected. Um, and so that's also, you know, you know, some good, um, you know, some good momentum in the market. So we're, we're pretty pleased with how Ryzen is doing. So tell me how you're thinking about demand and the possibilities, both on the consumer side with back to school and holiday coming up. What kind of uh, marketing muscle is going to be put behind the AMD um, notebooks? What kind of shelf space? And then the commercial side. What's driving that? Is it this uh, enterprise shift toward Windows 10? Yeah, so, you know, we really believe that, um, you know, consumers want, um, you know, good value and good technology. And so with Ryzen, we're providing, um, you know, really good um, sort of technology for the, uh, for the notebook form factor. And um, as we see it, you know, we have really good relationships with our key OEM partners, uh, given the number of platforms that are out there. But we also are building awareness with the consumer. And so um, in, that, in that sense, uh, with back to school and holiday, you're going to see a lot more, you know, Ryzen and Radeon, uh, marketing, you know, going after that. And then, as you said, commercial is actually doing uh, very well as, as well when you think about the uh, refresh of Windows. And, you know, commercial uh, buyers tend to take a little bit more time uh, to make their decisions. But, you know, we believe this is a multi-quarter growth story for us um, in the, uh, the Ryzen space. I want to ask about China. You've got this uh, joint venture uh, with Hygon uh, server processors that uh, observers are saying are, are pretty much the same as what you get from AMD. If you're writing software to it, you can write it the, the same as you would from AMD. Well, are these trade tensions now with China making it more difficult to maintain a relationship like that? Or are they making that pre-existing relationship more valuable for AMD? You know, we really looked at this uh, very strategically. When we think about, you know, how important um, processing technology is globally, uh, we wanted to build a, a strong relationship um, in China, as in the rest of the world. And our Hygon JV is one of those cases where it's a win-win. Uh, you know, we are um, absolutely looking at it as a way to grow our market. You know, clearly we have to watch, um, you know, some of the current developments uh, that are going on uh, between the U.S. and China. But we view it, you know, very much as part of, you know, how do we balance both uh, market share growth um, in China, which is important, and also protecting our IP, which is also incredibly important for where we are. Uh, let's talk about the, the revenue guide, which was light from what some analysts were expecting. How much of that was because some revenue came in earlier than expected? You, you had a strong uh, quarter. How much of it was because of this blockchain stuff? That, that, that business has slowed down a bit as Bitcoin's price, you know, Ethereum's price has been a little bit soft, but it's coming back. Yeah, so look, you know, when I take a step back and I look at our growth story at AMD, uh, you know, our annual guidance is for mid-20s percentage revenue growth. And if you look at um, the first half of 2018, you know, we grew revenue um, over a billion dollars. So we had a very strong first half. Um, there is some timing related things relative to uh, when revenue comes in. And sure, blockchain was a bit lower uh, here in the second quarter, and we project it to be lower in the second half of the year. But the strength of the AMD AMD story is all around our new products. I mean, you know, extremely excited about Ryzen we just talked about. And frankly, the data center is a great, great market for us. And we see it as just the beginning of actually a multi-year growth path for us. I think about AMD, I think about the com uh, competition with Intel. And sometimes you guys have strong products right at a time when Intel's stumbling. It happened in the past, seems to be happening again. H how much advantage have you been able to get out of uh, the Spectre and Meltdown issues at the beginning of this year were commercial customers saying, well, maybe we don't want to have so many eggs in the Intel basket. And how much of that might swing back the other way if the sleeping giant starts to wake up? 
Well, you know, I, I think the most important thing in technology is really to have, you know, a long-term roadmap over multiple generations. And for us, you know, we have been about high-performance computing. And, you know, really we've set out a multiple generation roadmap with our Zen 1 processors that are currently in market. And then we have our next generation Zen 2 processors that are in seven nanometer uh, that are coming to market in 2019. And so we really believe that we've made some great technology decisions and those are going to play out over the next you know, couple of years. So you know, we absolutely consider uh, the competition to be um, tough, uh, but we also believe that our roadmap is really strong. And so I'm looking forward to that competition. You're counting on Intel recovering and their process technology issues? Well, you know, we always believe that uh, we have to count on the competitor being good and us being better. So. All right. Lisa, thanks. Thank you, John. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.